If you want to ace your design game, you need to have a clear understanding of color theory. In the digital world, colors are more than just experimenting and finding the perfect combination. It's a powerful visual tool that evokes emotion. Look at this design for instance. The colors are not perfectly balanced and the overall design is not that appealing, even though the design itself looks fine. Now look at this one. Much better, isn't it? All because of the right use of colors. In this video, I'm going to cover everything that you need to know about color theory and no color theory explainer video will tell you that sometimes the tool that you use matter too, be it software or hardware. But BenQ has got you covered with the hardware. They just sent me this monitor that not only helps you view colors accurately, but also helps you work faster as a designer. You can view anything on this monitor and it'll just give you the most color accurate and true to life view of whatever you look on it. It's only after using the right color mode, you'll be able to achieve the desired effect that you want to convey through your design. And this monitor can help you with it. This monitor has to be one of the most color accurate monitors out there. BenQ has developed their own technology to deliver accurate colors on professional monitors called AQ Color. This technology consists of three main components. Number one, out of the box accuracy, which is determined by Delta E value. In simple terms, the lower the Delta E value, the more color accurate the image is. The monitor's Delta E value is shocking almost equal to 2 which is extremely color accurate. Number 2, since all Macs use the P3 color gamut as their default, this monitor covers 98% P3 color space and 99% of the sRGB color space. Its Thunderbolt 3 connectivity ensures fast data transmission and 85 watt power delivers with just one cable. You can also change your laptop while it's connected to the monitor. Efficiency and convenience are two major concerns in the designer's workflow. The Display Pilot 2 software solves these problems with one click. Let me show you how. As designers, it becomes very difficult for us to manually change color modes every time we open an application. Now you can easily assign different color modes to different applications. For example, you can open Photoshop in sRGB mode, browser in low blue light mode, and assign different modes to various applications as you like. Desktop partition allows you to easily split your screen and work efficiently on different screens side by side. You can also choose from a variety of pre-made templates or make your own custom layout. The hotkey control lets you control everything on the monitor from your Mac keyboard itself. The major thing that I like about the Display Pilot 2 software is the ICC Sync feature. Because what happens most of the time when you're working on a laptop and a monitor, your laptop shows a different color display and your monitor shows a different color display. The ICC Sync feature allows you to sync the mode of your monitor with your laptop, giving you the most accurate color display every single time. I'm completely in love with the software. It's the best productivity buddy for Mac designers. Moving further, let me tell you about its uniformity technology. You must have noticed that images look different on various various parts of the screen. The issue being differences in colors and the brightness levels on different parts of your screen. This technology ensures corner to corner authentic and accurate colors and consistent display brightness throughout. The deeper contrast and enhanced colors, this monitor uses IPS black technology which provides 35% deeper blacks than a conventional IPS display. The higher contrast helps you visualize everything as accurately and vividly as possible. As a working professional and a content creator, I need to strike a balance between portability and productivity and being being able to work, create and edit on the go is must. So I usually prefer a laptop along with an external monitor and sometimes I have to work parallelly with two systems. And switching between the peripherals is a pain when it comes to working like this. But with the help of the KVM switch, you can directly control two devices with the same peripherals. You just need to connect your PC with the monitor and you will see both the screens through the picture by picture mode. The display color talk makes it easy to sync colors across monitors with just a few clicks. Designers constantly need to help with getting consistent colors while managing two monitors simultaneously. With Display Color Talk, you can duplicate colors from your main screen and apply them to the second monitor in a few simple steps. I'll attach a guide to the same in the description. Make sure you check it out. It even has a software dimming which lets you reduce the brightness levels even further, helping you work better in the dark. It is the best monitor for designers who are never satisfied with the color that they choose. Let's start with a brief introduction to color theory. There was a research conducted that said people decide whether or not they like a product in 90 seconds or less and 90% of the decision is solely based on color. For example, when you're purchasing a dress, you look at labels first. No, instead you start with the most appealing color out there and you will know the right dress when you see it. 
it. Color is often the first thing that users notice. Be it digital design, app design, brand design, or anything for the matter of fact, understanding color wheel is the first thing that you need to do. Color wheel is a circular graph that charts each primary, secondary, and tertiary colors, as well as their respective hues, tints, tones, and shades. The red, yellow, and blue forms the basis of the color wheel. These are called the primary colors, which are like your parent colors. Everything that you see around revolves around these. The combinations of primary colors are also called secondary colors. For example, as you can see in this picture, orange is a combination of red and yellow. Green is a combination of yellow and blue. Purple is made from blue and red. As you do more experiments and combine primary colors with secondary colors, the result that you get is tertiary colors. Red orange, yellow orange, yellow green, blue green, blue violet, and red violet. Sometimes these colors are given names like vermilion, amber, teal, violet, magenta, and so on. Tertiary colors are important because they expand the designer's palette. For example, red and orange can be combined to make a red orange. One of the most important uses of tertiary colors is creating realistic representations of nature. Nature is filled with complex hues like sage green, brick red, sky blue. So tertiary colors are ideal for capturing these delicate tones that are neither one color nor the other. Now that you know the basic distinction between colors, let us learn about the characteristics of colors that will determine how you can use them in your design. Let's understand what hue, saturation, tint, and shades are. Hue is pretty synonymous with color. All of the primary and secondary colors are hues. It's also referred to as the pure form of any color. You may have heard phrases like blue hues, orange hues, yellow hues that simply refers to the color itself. That's it. There's nothing more to it. Number two, tint and shades. Tint is a mixture of color with white. White shades are a mixture of colors with black. Tint increases the lightness of your color and the shade increases the darkness of your color. You can have a range of both shades and tints in one color. Number three, saturation and tone. Saturation is the intensity of the color itself. When a color is 100% saturated, it will appear like the original, while no saturation of a color is just gray. As you move into the center of the color wheel, the colors are less and less saturated. Tones and saturations essentially means the same thing, but most people will use saturation if they are talking about colors being created for digital images, and tones are used more often for printing. Brightness and low saturation creates a calm feeling, whereas dimness or high saturation creates a strong feeling. Let us hypothetically assume you are creating a design for a gaming company. It could be a logo, a web page, or an app page. You will choose colors like bright red, black, and blue to convey excitement and power. The bright, bold colors will help you create an energetic and playful atmosphere. At the same time, if you're creating a design for a nutrition or health company, you will select colors like green, light green, dark green, yellow, and sometimes even white. But it can get stressful if you don't know how different colors work with each other and how to make a good color palette. Color how Harmony is a technique that allows you to combine colors in the ways that improves the overall quality of your design, while making it balanced and visually appealing to the eye. For instance, remember this card that I showed you earlier? I'm going to explain four color harmonies and side by side, I'll also show you how this card would look in different color schemes. Number one, monochromatic color scheme. It refers to using one color with different variations in order to create consistency and simplicity in your overall design. Starbucks, Meta, Duolingo all follow this one color scheme. The palette includes different shades tints and tones of the same color to create a monochromatic look. In websites, the lighter shades can be used for backgrounds and less important information and the darker ones can be used in headings and buttons. This is a monochromatic version of the same card that I showed you earlier. Number two, analogous color scheme. It is formed by a group of colors that stand next to each other in the color wheel. For example, yellow and orange, orange and red, blue and violet, and so on. These colors can create a sense of comfort and relaxation in the viewer's mind. Look at the colors of the palette of MasterCard. It is a perfect example of analogous color scheme. The overlapping red and yellow circles also has a tone of orange hue in which it signifies creativity and uniqueness and the red in the left circle is used to trigger passion and power. In most cases, an analogous color palette is three colors but it could go up to four or five as well. A warm analogous color palette with four colors could be composed of red, red orange, orange and yellow orange. A cool palette would include blue, blue green, green and green yellow. Dropbox's recent redesign uses shades of pink, purple and blue, which is also a good way to go. Here's the analogous version of the same card. Number three, complementary color scheme. It's a combination of two colors that are opposite sides of the color wheel. Artists and designers often use complementary combinations to make objects or elements stand out. Let's take the example of McDonald's logo. Red and yellow may not be complementary to each other, but the company has used a bright yellow as a background of dark red to make it stand out in crowded roads. 
On WeWork's website, the complementary color bright blue and orange are used in conjunction across the site. Fanta's logo is another popular example of complementary color scheme. Blue, white and orange create an excellent contrast and the overall design is appealing. Here is a complementary version of the same card. Number 4. Triadic Color Scheme It consists of three colors that are evenly spread out in the color wheel. A triadic color scheme focuses on one dominant color with two other evenly spaced colors serving as accents. It's more popular with filmmaking and photography. The iconic Superman has his costume in the shades of red, yellow and blue. In the movie Bottle Rocket, Wes Anderson used a triadic color scheme, one shade for each of the main characters. The reason why it is most used in film and photography is because the bold and saturated color pops right on the screen, constantly hooking the viewer's attention. Use it if you want to create a distinctive and a vibrant look. Have a look at the Tridic version of the same card. Make sure to check out all the links in the description for some amazing tools that will help you make good color palettes for your design. Also, if you're liking the video so far, hit the subscribe button below. As I had discussed at the beginning of the video, color has a huge impact on our decisions. Let us dig deep into it. I'll first tell you how wearing different colors can affect us and then we'll take a look at how the same colors sell in the digital world. A study surveyed a group of people from 30 different countries and found that people commonly associate certain colors with specific emotions. Here's a list of all the colors that they surveyed and the results. As you can see, this research has some universal qualities. For example, yellow means joy. Black is associated with sadness. Red is associated with love. Green with commitment and so on. But sometimes we also have our personal experiences with color. From the clothes you wear to the car you drive, it can make a statement about how you want other people to perceive you. For example, red. Darker shades of red can bring out the confidence, passion and energy inside you. On the contrary, if you're hoping to get noticed, consider incorporating red more into your outfit. Science tells that red is often the first color to be noticed by the human eye. Multiple studies on red showed that it can have various effects on behavior. For example, it can raise your heart rate, affect your attention span and make people seem more attractive. Black is seen as a color of boldness and power. It can easily intimidate others. It is said that people who love wearing black have a determined character. It conveys professionalism and elegance. There's a reason why people wear black suits to office because they want to feel powerful. Blue conveys positivity and loyalty. It's a classic color that can make good combinations with green and white. I don't know why this video is slightly turning into a fashion guide. <laughs> we didn't start with that. Wearing blue color also portrays confidence. It's a common color in school uniforms and government dresses as it signifies stability and responsibility. Orange and yellow. These two colors are often associated with joy, happiness, warmth and brightness. Orange is synonymous with the word warmth. When someone wears orange, it can give the impression that they are friendly, approachable and sociable. While yellow is rarely seen in clothes, recall Spongebob, Pikachu and the Minions, the cartoon characters that you loved as a kid. It signifies cheerfulness and friendliness. People who wear yellow are perceived as creative genius and curious. This is about what different colors convey about you. Let's talk about top 5 colors that sell. Number 1. Red Since red is the most eye-catching color, it can grab the attention of the user and you could definitely use it on critical call to actions or buttons. HubSpot ran a study on the effect of switching website call to action buttons from red to green and they got conclusive results. The red button outperformed the green by 21% in terms of click-through rates. In terms of branding and logo design, think of companies like McDonald's, KFC and Red Bull. The color red is stimulating and it is associated with being active. The yellow color is associated with happiness and it is the most visible color in daylight. So that's why a McDonald's logo is easy to spot on a crowded road. Number two, blue. Blue stands for reliability and professionalism. It is important for companies that work in financial or insurance sector, like big tech giants like IBM, Infosys, Microsoft, Intel, etc., have their names written in blue to emphasize on security, safety, and trust that these companies have built over the years. Blue boosts sales indirectly. A contrasting blue with other shades of blue or white can be used in websites that deal with finances, medicine, or insurances, where people need to think before buying. The next is green. Green represents new beginnings and growth. Many brands use it as a forward-thinking approach. For example, Android logo is a green bot. It captures the unique personality of this forward-looking brand. The Acer's bright green logo with a tint of yellow is a good example of using green that denotes change. Another eco-friendly business uses green to connect their brand with the nature and to emphasize on the environment-friendly products and solutions. Number four, black. Using black in a business logo can convey authority and power. Black does 
doesn't make great conversation elements, but a black and white color scheme automatically gives you contrast. Squarespace uses a white button on their black backgrounds. On a lighter background, the button is black with a white text. This gives them the freedom to choose a range of colors and hues in their imagery with black and white branding. In packaging, black can create a powerful and impressive effect. It can make products seem more stylish or even luxurious. Number 5. Orange Orange is a great color to make your visual elements stand out. It's a color that people feel positively about. Penguin has orange branding, orange subscribe buttons and orange buy buttons. Also check out how Harley Davidson uses orange against a dark background, bold orange stands out. The color is picked up in menu items and even eco in the red of the featured bike's back springs. It's also used in the food and beverage industry and product shoots and branding to promote happiness, warmth and excitement in the viewer's mind. By now you must be thinking, Well, thanks for the psychology lesson, Sapra, but how do I use these colors in my design? My honest answer to this would be, use it as you like. Mix and match with different colors and see what you can come up with. Just take care of one thing, do not fall into the trap of using multiple colors in one design. Less is more. It's so easy to fill your design with multiple colors and break the contrast, balance, consistency, everything between them as in this case. It might be just three colors in this design, but it does not strike the right balance. Those shadows and gradients used in it makes the screen more cluttered. Now look at this one. The new design looks much cleaner and has a better balance of colors. Everything is properly laid out and with enough clarity. You too can attain this with the help of the 60-30-10 rule. The idea here is to dedicate 60% of the palette to one of the color that will convey the major areas of your design. The other 30% of the palette is given to the complementary color and the third color is used for the remaining 10% of the design. The 60-30-10 rule spreads the color in different proportions so that your design is balanced throughout and it is easy for the viewers to see it. Color works best when applied proportionately. I've discussed about this rule in my previous video. Go check it out from the link in my description. There's one more important principle that you should know about color theory. Color affects readability. I've seen a lot of designers that use bright colors for the background and on top of it the text has some variant of a bright color again. This can affect readability. The complementary colors are the worst to use in this case as they have similar level of brightness and saturation. For example, purple text on the red background. Low contrasting colors can also hinder your text to a large extent. For example, look at these images. The text is clearly not readable and it looks very irritating to the eye. But if you use a high contrasting colors, as in this case, it not only improves the readability but also the design is visually appealing to the eye. Most of the time, designers are not able to find the next best contrasting color to the background for this. You must check out this tool. It'll help you find different contrasting color combinations that you can change by adjusting the slider. It also shows you the contrasting value besides the large text. The least point beyond which your text would be easy to read is 4.5 and it can go up to 21. Below 4 it is impossible to read. The tool is a must add in your list if you struggle between choosing the right colors for your design. What makes a design visually appealing to the human eye also depends on the kind of mode you are using for its display. There are two color modes that can change how a viewer looks at your design. If your designs are supposed to be displayed on any kind of screen that involves computers, smartphones, tablets, TVs, cameras, etc., the RGB color mode is the best. Basically, it's for digital work. A light source within a device creates any color you need by mixing red, green, and blue. This is known as additive mixing. CMYK stands for cyan, magenta, yellow, and key or black. This is the color space used for printed materials. When you need to recreate your design with ink or paint, the CMYK mode will give you more accurate results. All colors start with blank white and each layer of ink reduces the initial brightness to create the preferred color. When all colors are mixed, they create pure black. This is known as subtractive mixing. It is used in branding, advertising, merchandise and packaging materials. Essentially anything that is getting printed. And that was the video you learned everything about color psychology and contrast and how to create interesting palettes. Check out the video over here if you want to become a more efficient designer and check out this video over here to start your UX journey as a beginner. This is Sapta. See you all in the next one.